guys, so today I thought I would make a video talking about common themes that show up in young adult literature that relate to today's society. The first one is individualism, and I think that this one's really important because a lot of the time, main characters in young adult novels are set apart by some kind of trait, some characteristic that is unique to them. Sometimes this trait is biological and the characters are born with it, such as Juliet's gift in Shatter Me and Triss's divergentness. Sometimes this trait is a desirable or undesirable yet unique personality trait, such as Katniss's bravery, or Alaska's enigmatic insightfulness, or Eleanor's ability to self-express. And sometimes it's a combination of those two things, such as in Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. Both of them have these supernatural powers, but aside from being the chosen ones, they're also extraordinarily, exceptionally brave and selfless. I think that the majority of young adults today are obsessed with finding that same kind of defining characteristic and that same sense of self that their favorite characters have. This obsession has both positive and negative results in that it inspires us to do some self-reflection, and if we find something extraordinary inside of ourselves, it boosts our self-esteem. If we don't find something extraordinary, we're motivated to go develop our skills and our talents to make it extraordinary. On the flip side, if we don't see the same level of exceptionality in ourselves, it can be discouraging, but ultimately, and more often than not, I feel like that self-reflection and comparing ourselves to our favorite characters results in good things and self-improvement. That being said, and this is really interesting, the next theme is categorization. So although this is contradictory to everything I just said, young adult books also promote a need to fit in somewhere and a place to categorize yourself. Just bear with me here. The houses at Hogwarts, the factions in Divergent, the cast levels in the selection, the cabins at Camp Half-Blood, the red versus silver communities in Red Queen, the Greek versus Roman dynamic from Heroes of Olympus, even the supernatural race groups from the Mortal Instruments series, all of these things represent a community that the main characters belong to. In Harry Potter, even though Harry is this crazy, incredible individual that is set apart so far from everybody else, he's still in a group of people, the Griffin that are more or less just like him. Even though Triss is divergent and can't be categorized, she still fits into these factions with people who have the same aptitude that she does. Reflectively, I think it's human nature to collaborate and to want to fit into a group that shares similar ideas and morals. So while we strive to distinguish ourselves from the people around us, we also want to fit in. We like to define ourselves. As a feminist, as an environmental activist, as a part of a religion, a part of a team, or a group, there are so many places that we divide ourselves and we put ourselves into these communities with people similar to us. It makes us feel more like humans. It makes us feel like we're a part of something that matters. The next theme is mental illness, and it veers a little from the things I've been talking about previously. So mental illness, and I think this is great, is becoming a more openly discussed topic in society. People who struggle with anxiety, with depression, with OCD, etc., can talk about it now without feeling like they're so different, like something's wrong with them. This kind of thing is less common in young adult books, but it's still really prominent. For example, one of the main characters from Will Grayson, Will Grayson suffers from severe depression. And I haven't read this book, so I'm not really sure, but I have heard that in Zoe Sugg's novel Girl Online, the main character Penny struggles with anxiety and panic attacks. In one of my favorite books ever, I'll Give You the Sun, one of the protagonists, Noah, seems to develop depression and suicidal tendencies midway through the book. And one of the biggest examples of mental illness in literature is probably The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Charlie, the main character, is so severely depressed that he ends up struggling with substance abuse and he is hospitalized. I think it's so important that these problems are expressed in the novels that we're reading because younger kids that read these books can grow up with a better understanding of mental illness and what it is. And if they have a friend that struggles with it or if they themselves are struggling with it, they'll be able to talk about it and vocalize it and get help. In the past, the mentally ill were ostracized and kicked out from society, basically, and that's starting to change. We're a huge part of that change, and books are certainly doing their part in educating people. The fourth and final topic is something that means a lot to me personally, and that is gender equality. A lot has changed over the years in terms of equal rights for all genders, but it's still nowhere close to being where it should be. I think that this is one of the world's biggest problems, and I am a privileged white female living in America. So 
If you put your finger on any location in the globe, I can almost guarantee you that the people there have it worse off than I do. And I want to change that, so I'm going to talk about it. One of my favorite things about young adult books is that a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them promote a strong, independent, female lead that is a catalyst for change. One of my favorite examples of this is Katniss from The Hunger Games. And I think that she's probably one of the strongest female characters that the young adult genre has to offer. I am so happy that the mainstream chose the Hunger Games franchise to become the world's next overwhelmingly huge obsession. And I say this because not only is it a fantastically written book, the next generation of children is growing up with Katniss. I myself grew up with Hermione from Harry Potter, who is the greatest witch the world has ever seen. Not only is she the greatest witch the world has ever seen, she's also one of the most intelligent characters in young adult fiction. She's intelligent, she's resourceful, she's not a stereotype, and furthermore, in the movie she's portrayed by one of the leading women for gender equality, Emma Watson. I think some would argue that Game of Thrones is not a young adult book, but personally I know a lot of young adults who have read Game of Thrones, so I'm gonna go with it anyway. Daenerys Targaryen from this book is probably one of the most kick-ass female characters ever. I really appreciate the fact that she conquers kingdoms not by fighting it out, but by being diplomatic and way smarter than everyone else. It does not hinder Daenerys whatsoever that she is a woman, and Game of Thrones is written in a time when women are sorely underappreciated and often prostituted. If you've read Game of Thrones or watched the TV show, you know that Daenerys didn't really have a smooth start. She was basically sold into a marriage, but eventually she comes out on top and she is ready to take back the throne. This century there's been a push for gender equality, and I think that these characters have done their part in inspiring girls to contribute to that effort. Girls should grow up understanding that they are every bit as valuable and capable as their male peers. So when adolescent girls read these books about strong women, this message is enforced. This is so, so important to me, and I think that this is one of the more empowering, one of the more important messages that the young adult genre has to offer. So although you can find thousands more themes in young adult books, those are all I'm gonna cover today because I think they're some of the most vital and some of the most prominent. And that is all I have for you guys this week. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.